When you're staring down an ancient red dragon, one of the most dangerous creatures in the monster manual, with a bite attack that could take your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you? No. <laughs> you should have taken the lucky feet. Greetings, adventurers. My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Today we're taking an in-depth look at the Lucky Feet in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Yeah, we're going to break down the rules for the Lucky Feet and clear up some common misconceptions about how the feat works in play. We're also going to look at some great class combinations and other tricks that you can use to get the most out of this feat. Finally, we're also going to discuss some role-playing ideas about how you might play a character blessed with such good fortune. So, let's get lucky. So just like all other feats, you can choose to take this instead of an ability score improvement whenever your class has that. So, let's break down what you actually gain when you take the lucky feat. And it's pretty straightforward. You gain three luck points. Yeah, and any time that you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can choose to roll an additional d20 using one of your luck points and choose which die roll you want to use. Yeah. You can also use one of these luck points whenever an attack is made against you. And you can choo choose then to roll an additional die and decide whether you want to use your die or the attackers. Um, in all cases with the lucky feat, you have to decide before the final result is declared what, which die you're going to use. You don't get to know what the outcome was before you decide to use the point or decide which one, which die result you want to use. If two characters use luck points to influence the same role, they cancel each other out, but both lose a luck point by doing so. And you gain your luck points back whenever you complete a long rest. So, right off the bat, if you are used to rolling really poorly in-game, if you think that you have bad luck in real life, taking the lucky feat is the perfect fix. <laughs> yeah, it's also an amazing feat to help you out in those moments that you're really trying to do something awesome and the dice just want to work against you. Mm. Using the lucky feat can really make those awesome moments that you desperately want to have uh, happen. Yeah, there's so many times when um, a player has attempted to do something super awesome only to have the dice say no. <laughs> uh, like the time that I tried to plan an elaborate, um, basically, infiltration of a dragon horde, only to uh, totally fail my stealth check and get torn to pieces by the dragon. Yeah, and I think there was even a critical hit in the mix that basically dropped you right down in the first round of combat. You lost all the advantage of surprise, and that really was because the die rolls just totally came up against you. Had I had the lucky feet, I could have changed the tides of that and made it work a little bit more according to what I had spent a long time planning. And your character wouldn't have been taking a dirt nap right off the first round of combat, uh, which I think is a really key thing with the lucky feet is that, well, it helps you succeed at those clear moments because you can use it on a saving throw or against an incoming attack. It can actually save your character's life. Um, you can turn a critical hit uh, that lands on you into a miss, or at the very least, a regular hit, which can be the difference between life and death. So when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, you're in control of your character's actions, but every time you pick up that die, you're holding destiny in your hands. Yeah, having the lucky feat can change your character's fate, or even help them take control of it, even just for a moment. The way that the feat works um, is that when you roll the additional d20, it's not a re-roll. You're not rolling again. You're rolling another die and choosing which one you want to use. This is a very important distinction, uh, especially when you have other abilities or other factors that let you roll additional dice, such as advantage or disadvantage, because the lucky feat actually overrides how these things work. If I have advantage, or specifically, I think it's even more powerful if I have disadvantage, mm -hmm. because it can really change what that die roll means. Yeah, and this is one of those cases where normally with advantage and disadvantage, you are rolling two dice and taking the highest with advantage or the lowest with disadvantage. The lucky feat overrides that because it's a specific rule 
And the Dungeons and Dragons rules are instance where specific rules beat the general rules. So that clause in the lucky feat that says you choose which die to use is the key here. What this means is that when you roll with advantage or disadvantage, you roll two dice, and then if you choose to use the lucky feat, you roll a third die. And now you get to choose which of those three dice to use. This has been clarified and confirmed in the FAQ articles, as well as uh, through Sage Advice by Jeremy Crawford, which means that if you roll disadvantage and then use your lucky feat, you can turn disadvantage into super advantage, like uh, because you've got three dice and you get to pick the best one. Yeah, and that can be a really powerful thing to use in the game, and some DMs have a little bit of trouble with this. Yeah, but I like to think about it is that with the lucky feat, your luck is shining through in the most desperate moments. Think of all those times when our favorite roguish characters were completely in over their heads. They were clearly in a moment that you would say, they've got disadvantage. And then they followed through with their luck in that critical moment. And I think that that's what the lucky feat is kind of representing. Um, that said, I have talked to other dungeon masters that feel that this is overly impactful and either house rule it that lucky cannot be applied when advantage or disadvantage are in play or that um, that specific override that lucky makes you get, lets you choose that advantage or disadvantage override that and you still have to accept the lowest or highest result. Why don't we talk about some of the great combinations, specifically with various classes that you can uh, that you can use for this feat? Mm. I I think that right off the bat, halflings are awesome fun to take the lucky feat with. Yeah, because Be you got halfling luck. Yeah, which is a natural reroll whenever you roll a one, and it just kind of makes great thematic sense. Um, this is a good moment to mention actually how the lucky feat interacts with things like rerolls or um, things like Bardic Inspiration, which can increase die rolls, right? Because the Lucky Feat itself only influences the d20 roll, right? So if you have something like Bardic Inspiration, or um, for example, the Bless spell from a Cleric, right? You still only roll that d4, or that d6 once, and then it is applied at the end with whatever benefit you've got. So you roll your d20s, you pick which die roll you're going to mm. do, and then you add your additional dice to that. Exactly. With the case of Halfling Luck, because it's a reroll, some rerolls in um, D&D will actually specify whether they can be applied before or after the results are determined. So there's, uh, there's some abilities like Halfling Luck that very specifically trigger only on a natural one. And so generally you know that you failed. Right, yeah. And this is an instance where um, even though you know that you failed with a natural one, you can technically still apply lucky. And then the re-roll, you don't know now whether you've succeeded or failed. So you can re-roll, and then if the re-roll is still bad, then you can still apply lucky because you still don't know what the final result is. Now, if I apply lucky to my second die, uh, so I'm adding in that second dice, yeah. and that rolls a one, does my halfling luck kick in to allow me to reroll that one? I think so, but that's an instance where that kind of falls under the DM's interpretation, right? Um, can you reroll the lucky die? Like, because there's some instances like, do you get to reroll everything all at once or all together? The rules are pretty vague on this one, and so I leave this up to DM interpretation, of basically of how generous you want to be. Um, I think that lucky in and of itself is going to be such a huge impact that. Allowing rerolls on top of Lucky is just milking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and so usually once once it comes down to the point where you're going to use the Lucky Feet, they're, they're, they're probably going to succeed. How about the uh, Divination Wizard? Oh my god, I love this character. I, I know you do. I, I totally love... Uh, I, I played a Divination Wizard with the Lucky Feet, and it basically felt like I was... A cheating dungeon master while I was playing this character. It certainly did. Right. If you're a DM that loves fudging your die rolls and you're playing in a campaign and you play a divination wizard with the lucky feet, you're just going to feel like you're behind the screen again. Yeah. <laughs> because you are almost influencing every die roll and because um, the, the divination wizard's portent ability has you rolling a couple dice at the start of the day and then before the die roll 
uh, before someone makes a die roll, you can say, no, this is your result. So the interesting thing about this is that portent kind of overrides a die roll entirely. So you actually can't use lucky on a portent roll. Just the, the way that you're kind of gaming the system here is that you're minimizing the number of times you don't have the ability to influence the dice. Yeah. Right? So essentially, if you've got a situation where you have advantage, naturally, by virtue of, like, maybe you've got the foresight spell, you're probably not going to use a luck point or portent. But if you have a bad... If you don't have any advantages, you might want to use portent there. Or disadvantage. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So the combination of portent and um, the lucky feat, basically you just have a lot of options for changing die rolls. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like you're just gaming the system, which yeah. is kind of neat. Uh, and I think that really feeds into the role playing ideas that you can get when you have a character that's lucky. Um, because I love the gambler archetype. I, I love playing characters that love gambling, that are in over their heads with gambling debt, but yet somehow I always pull through. Uh, and I think that like, Video games like Fallout New Vegas are great for inspiring a lucky character, right? Because luck is always like this weird factor in the Fallout games, and they always have great quirks for the way that it manifests. Yeah. Right? Um, but I think the other element is like fate, right? Because maybe you're like Obi-Wan Kenobi, and in your experience, there's no such thing as luck. I always like to think of Han Solo. Yeah. As uh, he kind of never tell me the odds. That's his kind of motto. Um, he just kind of does daring things that any normal person should fail horribly at. But somehow he always pulls through by the skin of his teeth. And I think uh, what we don't see is that mm -hmm. there's a lot of lucky die rolls going on <laughs> when Han Solo's pulling yeah. off his stunts. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely see that. I also think of like um, like really awesome ace pilots. Right, kind of thinking of like Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica, right? Um, or like flying aces. There's always a bit of that gambler streak to these sort of characters where they're always a little bit reckless because they believe that their luck is going to pull through on their end. And especially if you have the lucky feet, that's a great opportunity to role play a reckless character that's like, yeah, it's all going to come out in the end. Luck's always on my side, right? So you kind of have that carefree, reckless attitude. Uh, another great example, um, if we're talking about the halfling being lucky, is Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much the entire Hobbit yeah. uh, book, he basically is just lucking his way from situation to situation and somehow always makes it through. Ends up doing some pretty heroic things, mm -hmm. but really it's it's mostly just him kind of like dodging attacks and slinking away into the shadows uh, by being lucky. Yeah, I think there's so many... Uh, luck in fantasy literature is like the trait of the protagonist. And I think that that's kind of like the author's way of manipulating the story to kind of explain the um, exaggerated circumstances. And the lucky feat really feels like the author's on your side when you have it. Um, but this could be a little bit frustrating for a dungeon master to deal with at the table. So do you have any tips for a dungeon master for dealing with the lucky feat? I mean, really, there's not a whole lot you can do. I guess you could have them have to roll a whole bunch of dice. That feels kind of meta to me, though. Like, yeah. having a character be like, I'm just going to make you roll dice so many times for so many saving throws that you have to keep using your lucky feet to just survive. Um, I mean, yes, it is worth mentioning, though, that, like, a player with the lucky feet that doesn't have to make a lot of die rolls in a game session, the lucky feet's going to have a much bigger impact than if they had to make a lot. That's why I think like the Divination Wizard is such a really key example of that, because oftentimes a wizard or a spellcaster is using magic that forces enemies to make saving throws, and the number of times that they themselves are making an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw is actually not a lot in the average game session. Whereas I think a fighter who's making four attacks, five attacks, action surging, and stuff like that, they make so many rolls that the lucky feat isn't as impactful for, for them, at least offensively. They're probably going to save it for their saving throws. Yeah, and one thing to keep in mind that I've seen happen a lot with the lucky feat is if you do have a character that has the lucky feat and has to make a whole bunch of rolls, uh, you tend to always either A, 
hold back on using it because you're always waiting for that prime moment mm -hmm. and then you realize at the end of the battle you missed a bunch of moments that probably could have helped you yeah or you use them all and then something terrible happens like you get crit the next turn and you say i should have held on to one of those luck points so i mean really it's it's with great power comes great responsibility with the lucky feet. This is also a tricky thing that you might need to talk to your player with because the lucky feet, because it forces the player to make the decision before the d result is declared, you can end up with a lot of slowdowns and indecision um, because the player sees the results of the die and maybe they've rolled like a seven or an eight and they start hemming and hawing over whether or not they want to use lucky or not. Um, and then sometimes they end up at the end of a game session and they've hemmed and hawed every single die roll, slowed everything down, and then they never end up using any of their luck points. And I think that if you have a player that's prone to that sort of thing and they've taken the lucky feat, you might want to just let them know, like, hey, you got to be a little more decisive with this. It's slowing things down a little bit too much, right? Yeah, so can... that's just one thing to keep an eye out for with, with players that have taken these kind of dice fixing feats because it actually can slow down play. You could, as a dungeon master, even let them know, like, hey, I'm going to give you about five, six seconds yeah. after you make your dice roll to decide. And if you haven't, then we move on. Yeah. Yeah, die rolls are one of the biggest things that can slow down play. And adding on top of that, um, just, you know, you're adding the calculation time and everything like that. It's something to really be on, the, on point with and on the ball with and just making sure that your players are not... Um, spending a ton of time decision making and being indecisive. Fortune favors the bold <laughs> is a great way to remind them to, you know, make a decision, use the luck points, and get on to the next action. So this has been our guide to the lucky feat in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. We hope that you're feeling inspired and may the odds be ever in your favor. Indeed. May all your hits be crits. Of course, we would also like to hear your stories of the epic exploits you've pulled off through sheer dumb luck, or any tips and tricks that you might have in mind for using the lucky feat with your characters. Tell us all about them in the comments below. And for all you dungeon masters out there, we have a whole bunch of DM tips guides right up over here. And players, you won't want to miss our fantastic class guides, which you can find right over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.